Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Here we are. Bass U Live, broadcasting live from ICAST 2018. Um, I'm excited. Two reasons. One is my guest left and right of me. Uh, I've got Johnny and Caleb with me, both missile guys. We're going to be talking missile baits here in a little bit. But before I do that, here's the other reason I'm excited. I'm actually sitting in the co-host chair. I haven't been here all day. It's been Petey Pete. Uh, shout out to Pete for working his butt working off today. It, working it. And we didn't feed him either, which is <laughs> strange. Ooh, we ooh. didn't feed him anything all day. I don't understand that. Uh, but I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Let me remind you, this is unique. BU is the only educational platform that broadcasts live from ICAST like this. And we're trying to give you updates. Um, this is a business of business show. So all these dudes watching right now, right. they never get here, man. So they're seeing yeah, this. That's all. How, Caleb, how that's would you good. describe iCast? Because is this your first time or second this or third? This is my second year, but I spent a lot of time watching it from my desk at work. Right? And you so you it. were that guy. I was that guy. Dude, and you follow it on every Instagram handle, everything that you could find to co try to cover it to make yourself feel like you're here. Yeah. This, this, oh, yeah, this would have been awesome. I'd yeah. Have, I'd have ate into this, man. So people watching right now, watching home, how would you describe iCast? Give, give your description of it. I think it's it's it, any fishing junkie out there that's got the – the the hunger for any for fishing like we do that it's got everything anything that you look at on tackle warehouse or any store is here and they're releasing new products it's just everybody's here to talk fishing and show fishing products it is the fishing guys dream yeah, yeah. Doesn't, yeah. Matter, doesn't matter if you're saltwater freshwater Fact. inshore you're a kayak freak fly fishing fly fisherman yeah it's all here That's give, right. me, give me your perspective john from from you're an angler but you're also owner of missile missile baits and missile jigs what does this show mean to you as a business owner uh, to me i i cast you ha you have to be here i mean if if you're if you own a business and you want to be a legitimate business in the fishing industry it's a must you have to be here it's right just, it's just you know, part of the cost of doing business yeah and uh, and i feel like not only that but like you have to come in here and and make an impression and show the image of your brand what your company's all about are you going to come in here and have uh, you know a booth that's just in shambles or, or it's not professionally done or you have crooked backdrops or are you going to have a be a company that you know, has their stuff together everything's very clean yeah. very neat are your people all organized do are you color coordinated on your outfits yes. stuff like that like i feel like little things like that right. matter because that that shows how you do business and when the buyers show up uh, the distributors show up the retailers show up and they look and they're like hmm I like I like the way this company does things. Yep. And uh, I feel like that's that's kind of what you have to do from a from a company perspective, but from an angler perspective, you know I've got to be here. I've still got to bounce around to the spro booth and the sunline booth, and uh, you know I mean you're doing you're doing all that. Yeah. But uh, it's it's good because a lot of my sponsors they know about what I do with missile, and so so they're they're like okay you do you do you, I know you do what you got to do, and then and then you get to us when you can. And so everybody and everybody on you know that I'm associated with seems yeah. to be cool with that. It's nice. It works out yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, real quick, while we're here and we got Caleb here, I want to flash back to a, a week, a little over a week ago, about two weeks ago, tournament of Lake Oahe, new body of water, smallmouth fishery, ultra clear water, dude, thirteenth place. You stole it away from uh, Atafo, who had five thirteenth <laughs> places. <laughs> he was telling before me that. You. Yeah. But um, great event. You're not a smallmouth guy. You're, you, 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 say flotant for me real quick. Flotant. 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 You're a southern guy. You're a bayou guy. You're Louisiana. I love to say Louisiana. That's you're it. a Louisiana <laughs> guy. Dude, how I, I need to know real quick before we get into this stuff. How did you – you had a solid event. Tell me about it. Tell me about the baits. Tell me how you figured all that out. I, you know, I, I don't know. I had a, I had a relaxed practice there, I guess, because I, I knew that everybody was on the same playing field with, like, not having 10 years extra experience on me with there. It, it was, new. was new. Yeah. And, you know, I was real – I was real efficient in practice, and I got bit early in practice, and it 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 kind of kept my confidence. But practice was everything, man, because I felt like once I got bit one spot, I felt like you got momentum. I got momentum going. You know what to look for. You're looking at your chip. That's you right. You kind of started seeing a, a rhythm going. And on. I learned, yeah. So like, it's main link points, right? Main Everybody link points. Everybody like bouncing on these main link points, and you know, you might hit 20, but you might get bit on two. Right. And you could not make it work on the mother 18. Right. No way. They right. weren't there. They what didn't was live the where? difference on those two points? Because I missed it. Me, I, me and John both I missed that I didn't fish the tournament. I actually didn't <laughs> fish the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> what was the key to – why did those two out of the 18, why did those two this have This might sound extremely unprofessional, but I have no idea. Wow. 
I, that's a good I'm gonna, answer. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be solidly honest. Hey, the that's to me, was, that's to me, that's that's sometimes that's the whole deal. Is that you, is you, the whole deal. Don't ask why on everything. It that it is the way. It I is. have you no explanation. It. There was bait there. That that, right. that that was my other theory. Right. There was bait there, and it just wasn't baiting every part of the lake. And I feel like those fish are trying to get on shad really hard. Mm-hmm. Post spawn. That's right. Feed up. That's right. Yep. Yep. Tell me about the key baits, because I know you're a missile guy. I know you're throwing a lot of missile baits in that That's tournament. Right. Tell me about what you're using. You know, I, I threw a shockwave on a, on, a, on a swim bait hit a lot in practice, and I caught some fish. The deal for me throughout the entire tournament was the bomb shot. That's, a new, that's a new little bomb sh- Boy. Little drop shot bait that we've got. It's based on the D-bomb. <sighs> and, uh, dude, John, John gave you some for the start of this tournament in practice. I went pick it up from him, and, you know, like I was selling crack. It was, dude. I, was, I had to get him. He gave me, he gave me like four colors, and he's like, "Yeah, I got a couple other colors." I made sure to get the other colors, but the deal was a shad colored fish delicious and a green pumpkin, and also alternating, threw, yeah, alternating a couple of different colors. I had a pink too as well. When the water got a little dingy, I like pink delicious. Pink delicious is great. You gotta have pink. Yeah. And then I dropped pink on him, and a lot of the fish I was seeing, but a lot of fish I wasn't. I would just when I I wasn't seeing fish, I was just making little short pitches in front of the boat on these humps and main link points, and I'm assuming, and what was going on in my mind is that these fish were swimming 12 to 20 foot over to come eat your bait. Right. And if they weren't in the right mood, they weren't going to eat it. Right. And there were so many fish that that would look at your bait when you had, had to drop on some that they wouldn't eat it. But sometimes I would back off from where those fish were in that area, and I'd get one to eat. Yeah. They they didn't go far. Right. They just knew you were there, is the way I was thinking about what was going on. Now, there's a ton of people watching that are in the same boat as you. They're they're largemouth guys. They they don't fish a lot of smallmouth. They're listening to us saying, how the hell did you figure out how to fish <laughs> that drop shot that quick? Tell them a little bit about, you know, what you were doing with the drop shot. And I know the bait's key, because I, I know that a bait's Give a me. special bait. Yeah, but that's special bait. What were you doing with the... How are you working? Tell I, these guys how you're working so and what that bait was doing in the water. That first initial fall, I got a lot of bites on the first initial fall, um, but... You know, just once I'd let it hit bottom, I kind of let my line straighten out because, you know, when you do flick it out there a little bit, your line's, you know, got a big bow in it. I let that kind of straighten out. And maintaining bottom contact was was the key. Right. I was using a quarter and a three-eighths ounce drop shot weight. Three-eighths ounce ones were three. Heavier, yeah. When it was windy and heavier. Yeah. And um, it, if I had, like, I was fighting the wind and if I had a big bow in my braid, it, it was harder for me to maintain bottom contact and I never – got bit like that. I don't right. know. It, it sounds sounds funny. Yeah. But in my mind I had to position my boat to where I was either throwing into the wind or going with the wind to make sure I was maintaining bottom contact better. Wow. That's cool. Now John talk, I want to talk a little more about the bait. Because I walked past your booth. We were over there a little while ago. Mm-hmm. People were walking past and the one thing everybody everybody was looking at that we're gonna talk about it in a second but everybody was looking at that new drop shot little, bait yeah the oh, little dude. bomb shot dude it's, uh, t- tell me a little bit about it and, and talk about different rigging methods because Caleb was talking about nose hooking it yeah. but there's other stuff to do yeah it's it's um, you know like I said before it's based on our D-bomb body style Pete was raising his hand <laughs> he wants some and so uh, <laughs> it's got the it's got the ribbed rib sides it's got a solid core and it's got a solid head, so you can you can nose hook it. And it's got a you know some meat up there that you can you can nose hook it with. But then when you want to Texas rig it, you can Texas rig it, and then that ribbed body, just like the D bomb, man, it just collapses. So either way, you're gonna have really good hookups. And then it's got a little beaver shaped tail that's really thin. So you, I mean, you just barely move that little sucker, and man, that tail is just is just undulating yep. and flapping. And I think that makes a huge difference because, Absolutely. like, like Caleb was talking about, you just you just pick up the slack from it, and just that movement of picking up that slack, that bait moves ever sli- so slightly, and then it stops, and then the tail keeps undulating afterwards. Yep. And and I feel like that's a lot of when you get Absolutely. those bites. That's so um, that's key. So that that's yeah. a big part of it. I mean, in in from the sales perspective, we put 15 of the little, little jokers in a bag, for, and we're gonna sell them for 3.99 retail. So I think value wise is blowing away other drop shot baits on the market. Yep. You can't get better action. We got 10 different colors to choose from. I mean, everything from Super Crawl, which is an orange based deal, to Green Pumpkin, Green Pumpkin Flash, got the Fishalicious, the Gobi shad deal. color. What was the Gobi color? Gobi, Gobi Bite, Whew. which has got that uh, blue pearl uh, belly with the Green Pumpkin and purple top. I mean, just like a Gobi up north. We got pretty much every color base covered M- MM3. I mean, just. Oh, you know, pink delicious. We got all the color bases covered, 
So, I mean, it's I, cool it feels like it's a awesome no, no-brainer, and pretty much every retailer that we've shown it to ends up bringing it. I mean, we have dealers in Florida bringing that bait in. Yo, you think that thing will catch any fish at Thousand Islands? I, I don't want anybody <laughs> else in the field other than a <laughs> Mr. Gates can we, can we, That's right. Can, that's can we pull up the market for, for time? Pull up the market? Yeah, pull it off. No, I, just I, the missile guys dude, have it. our guys are so stubborn, so it's, it's kind of funny, I feel like, because Ish was like, dude, can we keep it a seat? I'm like, dude, they ain't going to fish it. Not until we whoop them with it. I yeah. mean, Caleb was like a gnat's ass away from whooping everybody with yeah. it up there it, at Oahe. If you you only brought four fish in one, one fish. day, one, one day. fish. Yeah. All yeah. you needed was another keeper. And I've been right there. In I mean, how cut. hard is that to do? Oh wait a minute, I didn't catch a limit either. Day. I, um, I thought you were stabbing at me. I was oh, like, oh, wait, uh, oh wait a minute, <laughs> I didn't catch a limit either day either. So um, but yeah, it, if you get it in front of one, I feel like you. The Louisiana you boy it. that fishes dirty water mm-hmm. and cypress trees can go up there and catch them. It, it's, That's actually it's, a good yeah. testament to it the fact of it. It really is. Right. I got confidence in it quick. Like the first day I went out there, I started getting bit on it. And it yep. was like my confidence was there. Yeah. And when times got tough, I still stuck with it. But that just wasn't around fish. When it got yeah. around fish, they ate it. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I, well, I want to switch gears and talk about another new bait, John, uh, released right now at the Missile Jigs booth. Um, this is the other one. People were walking past. They couldn't stop looking at it. And this is a special bait. Yeah. This is a special bait. I, we both fished this bait last week at Oahe, and we didn't have as good as finishes as Caleb, but for catching those shallow boulder fish. Practice was a little different. Practice was different. There were a, a lot different. more up. Yeah, and, and there was clear water. Clear water. There's those yep. shallow, clear fish, and, you know, like, I think, we, we know, we talked about it before the tournament. Once that wind changed directions and a lot of those boulders. Muddied it up. Muddied up. You know, it, Ish and I, and I think we, we talked about, we didn't know whether it was going to make it better or worse. Right. We didn't know. Never been there. Never been we there. never fished that lake, so we didn't know. I can tell you, it does not make it better. <laughs> no. I they won't know bite. now. No. It does not no, make it better. No, it doesn't make better. it better. Other lakes I've seen it, you know, be real yeah. good. You can throw, you know, more aggressive like chatterbait, spinnerbaits, things like that, and just wreck them. Yeah. In that in that stained water. Yeah. I, I got to give you um, a, my story on this, and then I want to tell you a story from Ish. Uh, he fished this last week. My story is goes back to, and you know, we've been working on, for those of you watching that think, you know, you wake up and it takes a week to design some. It doesn't work like that. Not quite. Uh, I, I've been lucky to work with this guy on three or four projects. It takes about a year to even get to the point where you're ready to do something. So we've been working on this a long time. Last fall, I got to fish the upper Susquehanna River with uh, Fletcher, uh, mm-hmm. the sh- one of the Shy Rocks. And, um, man, it was unbelievable. It's a good place, and we caught a good amount on a Ned Rig, a drop shot, some on a jerk bait. But then about two hours before we were done filming, I pulled this thing out, and I saw something happen. You know when the fish just tell you? Yes. I saw something happen that I haven't seen in a long time. And, dude, they went from biting it and having them hooked maybe outside the mouth, missing some, to to everyone's choked. Everyone's choked. And this thing would not snag. And I want you to talk about the head design a little bit, but hard to snag it in gravel and rock. And, you know... On the Susquehanna, there's a lot of little crawfish, and that thing was so dead nuts on to what they were eating. It was unbelievable. Here's the other story real quick. I want to tell Ish's story. Last week at Oahe in practice, Ish saw some big ones, some some three, yeah. three-and-a-half-pounders around some boulders, and he threw a drop shot on them. Couldn't get them to eat. He threw a wacky rig on And he went through like 10 different baits he went on the through drop 10 di- He just kept rotating. Went through a wacky rig, couldn't get him to bite. Tied on hair, couldn't get him to bite. And then he had one of these laying in the bottom of his boat. Hey, let me let me try that. Threw it out there. One of those three and a half pounders comes like, <laughs> swims away with it. Dude, that that's a good story of the effectiveness of this. Why? Right. Why? Why is this thing so good? I think it's a combination of the, the that's compact. A big fish. It's a big fish. Was that a bass? What was that thing? It's a snooky. 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 Jeez, please. They have... Um, they, it's just the compact size, and and it's got, you know, the the flare of the skirt I think makes a difference, and I don't know how else to how else to explain it other than that it's a compact. No, that's what a crawfish looks like, dude. It's a little compact. It's what a little field. crawl looks like. Exactly. Which, it's what a little crawl looks like. Look, look, in my opinion, you know, nine times out of ten when I look in my live well after I weigh fish, there are times I see lo- I call them lobsters. There mm-hmm. are sometimes. But dude, nine times out of ten, dude, They're the crawfish, I, dude, you the crawfish I see are little. Yep. 
Dude, and, and to me, you know, when you're trying to match the hatch, mm -hmm. that's the deal. The other thing I, I want people to try to think about is micro jig is not a jig for a bait caster. No. This, you're not flipping this no. and float on. I know. I'm not punching with you're that. You're not punching it. But when they want something subtle, like a Ned Rig, a Ned mm -hmm. Rig is a good comparison to this, almost like a spy bait. The key right. to a spy bait is its subtleness, right? Mm -hmm. Dude, this is subtle. This is a right. subtle bait, and it's going to work when, when, when stuff's tough. So here's this my, gonna be here's my take on a, uh, on, a minute, on a small crawfish. When they do that stance where they're, they're going to they're gonna, – you stop this jig, that's yep. like crawfish guarding. He's, yep. he's going to stand his ground. Yep. He has eight other legs that he's going to spread out. Yep. There, that's what a Ned Rig is missing. It, does, yeah, it doesn't have that flare. It doesn't, doesn't have, have the, the flare. flare. The flare is the legs of the crawfish going out. It is a perfect tiny crawfish imitator. Yeah. I agree. And it's another one of these ones in, in, in South Jersey. For those of you watching that are from southern New Jersey, you know the winter leagues, John. We've been fishing them for yeah. – I've been fishing them since I was Eric the intern's age. I think he's 12. Um, dude, in the winter in South Jersey – the fish in our lakes get on, and I'm not kidding you. You ready for this? You're going to think I'm nuts. They get on bugs, dude. They get on bugs. They get on larvae. They get on nymphs. Yep. And for years, we've kept this a secret in South Jersey. The, the 16th ounce size, mm -hmm. which is we're making a 16th, eighth, an eighth, and three sixteenths. And a three sixteenth. Six different colors. Six different colors. So three sizes, but that 16th in winter when shit's tough, when stuff's tough. And they're feeding on the bottom. I thought it was like live. I thought you said chips. <laughs> uh, chips. chips. When chips are, are tough. tough they're feeding on the bottom on little bugs. Dude. Right Dude. here. Forget about it. Forget about it. Dude, match the hatch. Forget about yep. it. I'm excited about done. this. A lot of people are excited about this. Dude, Here's I, the other thing. I, yeah. I do want you to talk about the packaging, how yep. this is going to – because this is, this is a cool deal. I want you to tell everybody – how you, how this is going to be packaged? Because that's cool. Yeah, we messed around with it, um, you know, talking about the design a little bit more uh, and the packaging together. Um, we started with a, a Gamakatsu number one hook. Uh, I wanted it to be, you know, we wanted it to be a really high quality, so we got the, you know, a really high quality hook, uh, which was a concern uh, for for a lot of people fishing a little teeny hook like that. And then that that balanced head uh, is really what I think helps keep it coming through the cover. Uh, it's rounded. It's balanced. That that's super important. Dude, comes, the head the head design super important. And through, the ninety comes through really well. And then the other part of it is we're gonna have two jigs in each package for a retail price of uh, five ninety nine. So that's... essentially three dollars a jig. And and the way we're gonna package it is we're gonna put the weed guards in the package. So either you can put the weed guards in, just uh, just touch them in a drop of super glue, stick them in there, they'll never come out, or you can leave them out. A lot of people fish these kind of jigs, these uh, micro jigs, with no weed guard. With no weed guard, right? So and I, I would I would say 80 to 90 percent of the time you don't need a weed guard. Yep. So people watching right now that are drooling, they can't wait to buy it. <laughs> When and should I'll, when, I'll, and I'll tell you the difference. Yeah. Tell them when. When should they fish a weed guard and when should yes. they? Yes. Uh, Without the weed guard in the in the jig, you throw it out there, you get a bite, you essentially just got to reel into them. And Done. You hooked. It's over. When you put that weed guard in there, you're gonna be, you know, you may have some brush around or heavier rock, uh, and it'll just come through it really well. But when you have that with that weed guard in there, when you get that bite, you want to reel up your slack, and then you want to you want to give them a little jack. Little pop. You want to give them a little like give them a little hook set. Not we're not talking like punching mats, jacking them. We're talking. You want to give them a, snap. a little, a little a snap. Little, yeah, a little pressure pop, and uh, and then let them get that first head shake in, and then you'll get them. Because if you just reel into them with that weed guard, a lot of times you just you'll just barely skin hook them, and they come up and they'll shake their head and come off. Yep. And uh, it just the weed guard requires just a little hook set. And for most people, when they get a bite, you don't have to worry about them setting the hook. They will set the hook. <laughs> They'll set themselves. But for a lot of finesse anglers that are very familiar with with fishing finesse baits in Ned rigs, and you don't have to set the hook on a Ned rig. Right. You just reel into them. Right. Uh, and without the weed guard, same way. You just yep. reel into them. But with with the weed guard, you got to put a little put a little wood to them, and um, it's done. Done yeah. deal. Now they're turning the lights out on us. Before they turn the lights out on us. What's the right rod and reel to use with this? We already mentioned you don't want to put this on a flipping rod. Right. What? G give us a roundabout on the right want, rod and reel and line. A, a and seven line. foot, a seven foot medium heavy rod. Uh, I throw on a on a cashing rod. 
My beer got confiscated. Oh my god. He's like, can't you let it get that hot? Yeah. It's illegal. It's he's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brian's had Heating three. Up. What's up? Been up here. Um. It's but you, that's the that's what I want. I like eight pound liter to the to the end. Yeah. And I throw it on twelve pound braid. Yeah. Um. And then just regular spinning reel. Spinning rod. All right, yep. Caleb. Seven we're foot. we're getting kicked out. Before we do. Yep. I want to call you to play it on one more thing. Uh. Grade yourself. Your first year on the Elite Series. Give yourself a report card, A, B, C, or D, or F. Give yourself a grade on your first Elite Series, and then give me expectations for the last two events. I'm going to give you myself a C. Okay. Because I'm learning, dude. I'm learning so much. Yep. I'm telling you I'm learning so many lessons each event, each day. Um, you know, biggest takeaways, I think, is I want to build my confidence in my decisions that I make on the water. Yeah. When I rip my trolling motor and run 10 miles down lake, I don't want to think about what I was doing 10 minutes ago. Trust your gut. Trust my gut. I, yep. need, I need to get into that mindset and be efficient because if I if I, if I I second guess myself and run 10 minutes back, I'm going to think about going back down the second I get there and it, I'll spin myself out. So having faith in my decisions that I make on the water is, is my number one lesson that I'm, I'm trying to get settled in with. Yep. And uh, my expectations for the last two events is, you know, I'm sitting in 60th in points right now. You know, I'd really like to make our all, our, all of our goals to make the classic, but um, you know, if I can make the AOI championship and still have a fight, a dog in the fight, yeah, going into to that, yeah, that's the goal. Okay, that's the goal. All right, yeah. Johnny, we're gonna we're about to leave, but let everybody know they they see this stuff, they heard about the, the, micro, the bomb shot. Micro jig is available later this fall. I don't know if we mentioned that. Okay, we're talking like October, November time frame, just in time for the winter series. That's right for the bomb winter shot, leagues. Bomb shot is available now. Yeah, right now. Yep, and then. Uh, and, and and how can they get them? Local retailers? Bomb Shot is available anywhere. Local retailers, Tackle Warehouse, you name it, you got it. Okay. And Caleb, people watching, like, I don't know this dude. I want to start following him. I like this guy. How can they follow you and your escapades Escapade. on tour? I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Caleb Summerall Fishing on Facebook. Caleb.Summerall on Instagram. I'm always on Instagram, Facebook, stuff like that. Um, you, you. <laughs> you, you and I'm there, man. I'm New there. Iberia. I'm yeah. New Iberia, Represent, Louisiana. Represent right. New That's Iberia, right. baby. There you have it. Uh, let me thank everybody for tuning in. Day one at ICAST. We're going to be back here tomorrow. Bry all day. Yes, yes. Nine no. to six broadcasting. Want to thank everybody for tuning in live to BU TV. Uh, want to thank our crew here. Uh, Brian the Carpenter uh, doing the dirty work back there. Eric the intern. Twelve year old. Uh, Twelve year old coming Jeff. in. Uh, Jeff in the house. Jeff yeah. saved the day today. Shout out to Jeff. Uh, of course, our dean, Pete Glusick. He's gone. He's gone already. He, he, he went to eat because they didn't feed him all day. He's, he's eating a, a chicken sandwich. He's got three pizzas on the bed by himself. Uh, <laughs> and, rolling around. Yeah, and, <laughs> just, and Justin <laughs> hanging back there. And Pepper the rest of the crew. Uh, <laughs> <on his> <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pizza man. Pete. We're having a good day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. More great stuff from iCash. You don't want to miss it. You're going to see it here first.